What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Too Deep. As a kid in school and then as a young adult in university, I was taught about different ages of the earth such as the ice age. Now, according to scientists, there are approximately five major ice ages in earth's history, the earliest occurring a billion years ago and the latest occurring around 2.58 million years ago. If you've never seen our videos before, we here at Hold to Hope hold to the hope of the scriptures. In other words, we place the word of God, the Bible, above everything else. It's our foundation for truth and our standard for morality. So with that said, let's search the only source of absolute truth for the truth on this matter. First, I'd like to say that you will never find the term Ice Age in scripture. Now, that doesn't automatically mean there's no evidence for it. That just means this specific term isn't used in scripture. Now, if you search the scriptures, you'll only find, depending on the translation, three or four verses using the word ice. But if you go to the original Hebrew, you find seven verses. Genesis 31 verse 40, Job 6.16, Job 37.10, Job 38.29, Psalms 147.17, Jeremiah 36.30, and Ezekiel 1.22. In Hebrew, the word ice is the word on the screen. Now, on a surface level, none of these verses seem to hint at an ice age of any kind. But before I get too ahead of myself, let's lay a little foundation real quick. In our video, Does the Bible Support Pangea, which is under our Too Deep category or playlist, we explained that before the time of Peleg, the entire earth was one solid piece of land. It was all one, but at the time of Peleg, the physical earth was divided into what we today call continents. Now I want you to keep this in mind when we read the account of the creation of dry land, earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 through 10. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas and God saw that it was good. I want you to notice how God creates dry land. First, he gathers all the waters under the heavens into one place, then he calls for dry land to appear. Now, this insinuates that the dry land was created surrounding the waters that were gathered together into one place. Otherwise, why gather them all together and then make dry land? Why not just leave them on the foundation of earth where they lie? I believe God gathered the waters under the heavens into one place so that the dry land, the earth, might be a boundary for these waters, as Job 38, 8-11 tells us they have. This now begs the question, if God divided the earth, creating what we today call continents, what's holding back the waters as a boundary? Well, this is where it gets interesting, at, le- at least to me. Let's go back to our seven verses that we mentioned a little earlier that all talk about ice with this new information in mind. Specifically, let's go to the verse where God himself talks in the book of Job. Job chapter 38, 28 through 30 says, Has the rain a father or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb did the ice come forth and who has given birth to the frost of heaven. The waters become hard like stone and the face of the deep is frozen. I want to focus on this last verse for a moment. And I want you to keep in mind that this is God speaking to Job, explaining to him all that he, Job, doesn't understand. So these are deep things that God's talking about. He says in verse 30, the waters become hard like stone and the face of the deep is frozen. On the surface, we can almost overlook what God's saying in search of the ice age, as this seems to have no connection to it other than talking about the waters freezing. Here's the thing though, if we dig a little deeper, this verse gets a little bit more interesting. That word frozen is the Hebrew word on the screen, which means to catch, capture, take, etc. It's used 121 times in 112 verses in scripture, but only once is it translated as frozen. Every other time it is a variation of capture, take, or in a verse or two, ensnare. Now this is really starting to sound interesting because why would the face of the deep need to be captured or taken if it's already gathered together in one place? 
When God divided the earth, he divided the borders that were keeping the seas in one place. So God had to come up with a solution. He had to freeze or bring a sort of ice age in order to capture the seas in their place again. Now this would have taken place before Job. The exact timing of Job isn't the most clear and obvious time period in the Bible, but what is clear about it is that it took place after the flood. And how can we be sure of that? God asks Job if rain has a father. God is asking Job if he understands that he is questioning the God who makes it rain on the earth as Psalms 147 verse 8 and Jeremiah 14 verse 22 declare about him. God wouldn't ask Job about rain if it hadn't rained yet. Therefore, if before the flood, the earth was watered by a mist that came up from the ground, as Genesis 2 verse 6 tells us, then this conversation would have to be after the flood and after the Tower of Babel. See, Job lived in the land of Uz and had three friends, Eliphaz the Timonite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite. Now, each of these friends came from their own place to see Job, according to Job 2 verse 11. At the time of Babel, the whole earth was one people and one language, and they were gathered together in the land of Shinar, according to Genesis 11 verse 1 through 2. So this can't be the time period that Job is in. Therefore, the time of this capturing of the waters or seas had to have taken place before Job. I believe it took place at the time of Peleg, so that the waters that went charging from their place when God physically divided the earth, he captured them by freezing them. Let's read what God said about the waters in Job that we mentioned earlier. Job 38 verses 8 through 11. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out forth from the womb? When I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said thus far shall you come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stayed so god set a boundary for the sea not to pass in fact he set bars and doors for the boundary but this now begs the question what is the boundary at first glance, it's easy to assume that this verse is talking about God capturing the seas, but if we look at this verse unbiasedly, we can see that this verse is about God setting two different boundaries. The first boundary is the earth that God set in Genesis 1, 9 through 10, as that would be when the sea came forth from the womb. And the second boundary is after the flood, as that is when the clouds became its covering, Genesis 7, 11 through 12. And God promised to never flood the entire earth again, Genesis 9, 11 through 15. The second boundary is the sand, according to Jeremiah 5, verse 22. And we still have floods and tsunamis in some places because the boundary, as stated by God in Job 38, 8 through 11 that we just read, has bars and doors. In other words, those bars and doors can be opened for a short time, but not all at once so that the entire earth won't be flooded again. So, if the first boundary, the earth, was divided at the time of Peleg, could that be the time that the sea was captured and frozen? Otherwise, what would be keeping the sea gathered together after the whole earth was divided into what we today call continents? And if that is what God did, could it be that the coldest parts of the earth are that new boundary God created in order to capture the seas? And if it is, could that be why no one is allowed to investigate and explore places like Antarctica? Maybe if we were able to, we would discover undeniable evidence that can't be disputed for the Bible and all that it says. Just a thought to think about while I sum everything up for you guys. At the time of Babel, the entire earth had one language and was one people dwelling in the land of Shinar. At this time, the earth was one undivided body of dry land that surrounded the seas and kept them within their bounds. When the earth was divided at the time of Peleg, the waters broke free and the Lord had to capture them with a sort of ice age that froze the boundaries and once again kept the waters at bay. This didn't take place a billion years ago or even 2.58 million years ago as science propagates with no evidence. This took place at the time of Peleg after the Tower of Babel. This would only be around 5,000 years ago as the earth is not billions of years old as scientists insist on falsely indoctrinating us with. For more on the age of the earth, check out our creation series which is under our 2D category or playlist. 
And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.